Administer true justice. Show mercy and compassion to one another. The Lord is righteous. He loves justice. Love tenderly those who are socially powerless. Uphold the cause of the oppressed. Maintain the right of the afflicted and destitute. Act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly. God's law is written on the heart of every human being. Treat people with protection and care. We have got a great guest tonight. He's been on the show before. I think back when we were doing the show at the Cork and Carry in Bridgeport, Mark Curran, lawman, former Lake County Sheriff for 12 years. Is it 12 years? Yeah, 12 years. He's also uh, a candidate all over Chicagoland and the state of Illinois. He's a right-thinking individual, a good friend of mine. Welcome back to the show, Mark. Thanks, Huli. It's an honor. <laughs> and so, Huli, just so you know, we're going to rebroadcast this as well. That's awesome. On WSFI Catholic Radio, 750 AM WNDZ in 88.5 FM WSFI Catholic Radio. we got a big audience, and we're going to draw people to Hibernating Radio, and you're going to draw people to... to uh, WSFI Catholic Radio, and we all win. Saturday night, this will be broadcast on global Irish radio all over the world, but primarily out of Ireland. Uh, and what they, my friend Sean Ginelli has formed this company. He's reached out through the diaspora and grabbed the Irish shows from Boston, Philadelphia, New York, Chicago, and he puts them all together, and they all go out over global Irish radio, so we're proud to be a part of that. So we're getting a lot of coverage here. Okay. No, that's awesome, Huli. Yeah. So, yeah. So, any questions for me? Just, uh, yeah. I, you know, I've been on uh, with the Skinny and Huli show when that's you right. guys were on the northwest side. Uh, yeah. And I, as you said, I was at Cork and Carey at the park, and I've been at uh, a number of your functions, and <laughs> it's great to be on your show again. For those in the WSFI Catholic radio audience out there, let me just tell you something. Mike Coolahan embodies Chicago. <laughs> Prob uh, in a good sense, probably As I better. Take a drink. <laughs> probably better than anybody else th th that's still walking. I, and I honestly mean that. This guy, uh, he was a longtime writer for the S Sun Times. Uh, he has the Catholic Film Festival in, in Beverly. He grew up down the there. Irish American Film Festival opening right Irish uh, American Friday in Will at the Wilmot Theater. And uh, we all got. I would encourage everybody to get out there. He's he's an author of s several great books, and one I, of he, which I brought for you tonight. You're awesome, brother. <laughs> uh, he knows everybody. He he has been everywhere. He he's done so much on behalf of the Irish uh, Americans in this city. But just in, in, in from an entertainment perspective, and his partner for many years, uh, Skinny Sheehan. Yeah. And Skinny was uh, the uh, the. Head of, of the South Side Parade for a long time. Ran special events for yeah, Mayor Daly. For Mayor Daly. Yeah. And, and Skinny, um, you know, his brother was uh, Mike Sheehan, the longtime yeah. sheriff. But they're, they pale in comparison to the contributions of Mike Houlihan <laughs> to Chicago and especially the you Irish that community. Skinny? You little weasel. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, Skinny's the best. Uh, he just donated to our cause recently. You know what? How many kids were in the Curran family? Your brother Tony is here yeah. with us tonight. I met Nick, your brother yeah. Nick, before. And so, that was yeah, two brothers and a sister. And the Curran family grew up on Hermosa Avenue in Morgan Park, Chicago, and their next-door neighbor was the Sheehan's. I did not know that. Yes. No and kidding. Yeah, yeah. and uh, Tommy Sheehan, who was the chief of police. Tucker. For Tucker for his, Oak Brook. And, and his Bo chief of police, Tommy Harrion, was here last week from Lyons. Yeah. Great. Yeah, Tommy would always bring up my grandmother and, and great stories. And your buddy, Johnny Vegas, oh, yeah. uh, remembered my grandmother really well. So, Sheehan, yeah. And I'm sure Skinny does as well, yeah. and Mike. And I, I've talked to both those guys a lot of times, not so much about my grandma, but they remember so they had so many fond stories of growing up back there sure. in the neighborhood. Yeah. Can I tell a story that would uh, reflect... Uh, the neighborhood that they grew up in at that time. Absolutely. So my dad was talking about, you know, what, l l let me back up a little bit. My dad, my mom would lay out brand new green shirts for us to wear every year at Loyola Academy on St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, good for her. Well, high school was over. I mean, the day was over. So I'm shooting baskets in the driveway, and I'm wearing an orange T-shirt. Uh-oh. Yeah. My dad pulls up, gets me out of the car. God's honest truth, Huli. He threw me down on the ground. <laughs> He's like, you know what day this is? Are you dumb? 
And so, but uh, the the story I wanted to tell was about his mom, who the uh, Sheehan's grew up with, and he's telling this like it like it's very normal. He said, "Yeah, we knew we knew some Protestants in the neighborhood. There was a lot of Protestants, as a matter of fact, back in the day. My grandmother was the one of the founding members of St. Barnabas Church oh, yeah. on Longwood Avenue, the the iconic you know Beverly Church, and um, but my." My dad said we we knew some uh, Protestants. We knew a lot of them. They were in the neighborhood. We uh, we were friendly with them, but we never we would never go into their home or anything like that. <laughs> and th- you you think it's like a punchline? No, he's like dead serious. <laughs> and, and if you if you ask for more questions with regards to that, he he would have slapped you for not not getting it better. <laughs> it's the same way in my neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, my my. My dad's, uh, my brother Anthony Curran's here, Anthony Cassidy Curran, were uh, named after Cassidy Tires, who was my <laughs> grandma's uh, group. Me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so my grandma's was a Cassidy. And Tony and I are old pals from the Chicago Athletic right. Association. Right. i got to ask you about the status of that. Uh, uh-huh. But, um, yeah, Anthony Cassidy uh, Curran is here, and, and uh, you know, it's just a great We also have city. Alamo Duke Lynch back with us. Who is only the most been on the show fifteen times so far, and he'll be back again maybe the end of this month. And Huli, who's our proprietor here? Put me on the spot, Scott, Scott Burns. Scott Burns. Scott Burns. Yeah. He's a, he's a uh, he was law enforcement, right? Wasn't Scotty? I don't think so. No, he's had this bar but, for twenty six years. He's a beacon, an accountant. He's the an Beacon accountant. Pub. Yeah. And Scott is just an awesome guy. <laughs> nice courtyard we're sitting in back here. So. If you get out in the area, you gotta you gotta come patronize this guy because he's a good guy. We're in Forest Park, where I I can stagger home from here. It's a right. beautiful spot. So now f- let's tell me ahead. about being sheriff for twelve years. Is that when you tr- went and said I I've decided to become a Republican while you were sheriff? Right. So I was elected as a Democrat in two thousand and six. Okay. And um, my dad was a was a labor lawyer, and the first time he ever voted for anybody that was a Republican. And, was he voted for H.W. Bush, and he couldn't stand the guy. Oh, yeah. Because H.W. was not exactly a f- friend of Catholics, and he was no. not really pro-life, and he was yeah. not really anything. No. Uh, but he voted for him because the right-to-life issue started to, he started to see that, hey, you know what, we can't let these guys have the court anymore. And so he wasn't going to let Bill Clinton pick Supreme Court justices, Good so for he him. voted for. Yeah. And then he started voting mostly Republican for you know a handful of years later. You know what? When I moved, I lived in New York for 12 years, and I moved back here in 85. My brother was a state rep. My dad's best friend was the alderman, Tommy Fitzpatrick. So we were entrenched in Irish Catholic Democratic politics. And uh, so I, my brother, I was moving back. I said, I got to get a job. Uh, who can you hook me up with? And they they got me a job as the special events director of the State of Illinois building. Remember that? Right, right. And uh He had a buddy, Phil O'Connor, who was the director of the Illinois Commerce Commission, who worked for Governor Thompson. And he goes, there's only one caveat. you got to register as a Republican. I said, I don't care. (laughs) Right, right. (laughs) I I had to tell my brother. And he goes, don't tell me next you're going to say you're a Cub fan. I went, no. (laughs) But uh, it was very easy to do. It was a pro-life issue and everything. Yeah, yeah. I'm proud of it. I think now it's even easier. I've been voting Republican ever since. Now it's even easier. Yeah. I wonder, you know, I mean, I, I don't know how these guys justify it, you know, especially, I mean, I'm friends with Tom Dart, you know, he's yeah. a good guy, I like him, um, but, you know, he's he's still there uh, on that left, and, and he's still, you he's know. He's the one who gives pizza at all the f- prisoners and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, and he's, you know, he's yeah. the Grand Marshal, the, the Pride Parade, and he's. Is he really? He, well, he has been, he ri- yeah. walk, marches right up front. <laughs> okay. He's, you know, I mean, a lot of that stuff, it's kind of yeah. like, you got to be kidding me, that's. You know, of the of the nuns at Mount Carmel, we well, not now Mount Carmel, right? I know. Come I'm sorry. On. No nuns at uh, what was his Tommy Moore? Yeah, they would have slapped him a few mm. times. I know you didn't have nuns at Mount Carmel. I think Tom. My Hart kids went, went to, to a Carmelite Barnabas. school as well. Your kids what? When My three boys went to uh, Carmel of Mundelein. Okay. Carmel Catholic. My Mundelein. sons went to Mount Carmel on the south side. They got it from River Forest. One of the coaches drove them. Yeah. So you got to get them early. Yeah, those young minds. No, no doubt, no yeah. doubt. But yeah, I was a, I ran as a Democrat, and um, I was kind of like a fence sitter. I was pro life. I got endorsed by those groups, but you know, we were. My dad kind of brought us up in in the uh, 
the right way. The mind, no, the also not the, just the right way, but also the mindset of the robber barons that if they could have their way, you know, Catholics would be relegated to the slums and, oh, sure. and we yeah. wouldn't get a living wage and everything yeah, else yeah, and, yeah. and what have you. So, I mean, that, that, there is a truth to, to that. Actually, a guy that I spent a lot of time with um, and flew me in for his Wednesday audience, Grover Norquist, who's the famous uh, anti-tax guy that yeah. everybody in Congress has signed a Grover Norquist pledge, every Republican. Grover Norquist, when I was uh, with him uh, and he was speaking on immigration, and he did this a couple times, he p- brought out excerpts of speeches from Republican conventions in the 1928, 1932, you know, and Al Smith oh, right really? on down. Yeah. And all of them were like just incredible with the overtones of, we will never be the party of the Romans. You know, basically there was a sign there. I mean, if you're, if you're Catholic, we don't want you in our party. Please oh, don't, wow. please don't come around here. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Grover Norquist. I see his name all over the place. Yeah. So what are you Americans doing now? for prosperity. Um, so right now I'm practicing law. Yeah. Represented. I handle a couple murder cases. I've got right now. I've got oh, all wow. kinds of different stuff. I got some. Injury work, but mostly trial stuff. But you were also a prosecutor. Pro- you were a prosecutor. I was for a, a county, long time. state, and federal prosecutor for a very long time, and it was, a, you know, it was a great life. And if you asked, uh, do it over, I, I wouldn't change a thing. It was, it was a blast working with the cops, getting bad guys. Yeah, yeah. I, did you see the picture we put out of you? You got your, you know, sheriff's uniform on, and it's pretty cool. But you know what? I, I put it. It said, uh, sheriff. Twenty for right, and then it said Maverick forever, because <laughs> you've always been a Maverick. Thank you, brother. Yeah, and I love that about you. And, yeah, thank uh, you. And you still are. Thank you. you. Know? Yeah. Uh, but you paid the price, right? Have you? I mean, no, hundred percent. I've lost so many friends over the years no from kidding. politics and positions I've taken and races that I got in when I was told I, I should I better not get in. Yeah. So yeah. Right on down the line. Well, you ran against Durbin, who I can't stand. Yeah, so I ran against Dick Durbin, won a five-way primary, and then beat him in 88 out of 102 counties. Beat him in his own county, Sagamon, which is where he's from, Springfield. Yeah. Beat him in basically the entire state with the exception of up north. And the center and the bottom south part of the state are all Republican now. They just become more Republican every single year. Problem is up north is just... You know, becomes more and more blue. Yeah, the county I'm from, Lake County, was at one time a Republican county. Now it's the second bluest county in Illinois. No kidding. Um, our proprietor here, he was telling me about he he's from out in DuPage now, and he was telling me that uh, he's from he lives in Naperville. Naperville, yeah. And, and, and DuPage County is extremely blue. Yeah. So all the collars are for the most part, with the exception of McHenry. Well, you know, one of the things we do on this show, uh, we started this show in 2019. And it's dedicated to Irish first responders, primarily because of what the find the climate was for police, and it was I thought it was just awful. Then it's worse now, uh, but we feel that the police are a modern day equivalent of our ancient mythological Irish warriors. They're the guys who go out there every day and put their lives on the line for us and for our families. So the show is all about law enforcement, police, and their history, their great history. And we've heard some amazing stories in their last four years, five years, I think we've been on. And so that's what this show is on. We have a very large audience of cops. And, and if a guy isn't Irish, we make him an honorary Irishman. Uh, John Kenton Zara has been on the show, I think, four or five times. Uh, we made him an honorary Irishman. We've got some other guys. but um, He's a Croatian, right? I, I don't know what he is. He yeah, went to Rita, that's all I know. Yeah, he, he went to it. <laughs> There's a big Croatian church that Bertoliak would go to, and he was, he went to that. Yeah. Well, he stood up for the p- cops with Lori Lightfoot and everything. Right. And we've got some great interviews with him. But that's the meat of our audience is law enforcement, and they've been very loyal to us. And they've many of them, I'll tell you a story. You know, I run a not-for-profit public charity dedicated to uh, Irish and Irish-American culture. And... W- We've been videotaping these interviews, so we have over 200 of these interviews. And I thought, well, let's make a film out of this, especially in the climate that the police are taking the hits. And there's an organization called uh, Unfunded, and they help 
not-for-profits, they look at your uh, grant applications and tell you whether it's any good or not. So I sent them my grant application for this film. The title of the film is uh, Irish Cops Under Siege. And they are under siege. And I get my application back, and it's, you know, you get a critique from three different people, and one of them says, you're a white supremacist. I said, what? And he goes, yeah, what did you say? You said about George Floyd. I went, hey, George Floyd is a piece of crap. <laughs> no, he wasn't. I went, give me a break. So that's just emboldened right. me to say, yeah. wait, this is the whole, the train is going off the tracks, you know? Yeah. And you got now you got this idiot mayor in Chicago, uh, Brandon Johnson, anti-police, but he wants a huge bodyguard contingent. Yeah. It's just crazy. Yeah, no, he's a horrible guy. You have more <laughs> socialists in the Chicago City Council than any other city council in America. No kidding. I mean, the, the direction of this city is just absolutely abhorrent. But, you know, you fly in to O'Hare, and you look down or you drive around, and it's still a gorgeous city. Oh, yeah. Architecturally, beautiful. it's still the prettiest city in the world. It's yeah. just with what's going on on the inside, people don't know that, but it, it's all dangerous, and it doesn't bode well for the future. Our grandfather, or uh, not grandfather, uh, uh, Patrick Cooney, so my grandmother's uh, brother, was an IRA member. No kidding. Uh, and was uh, imprisoned wow. in, uh, was it in my brother Anthony's behind me, was it Australia or South Africa? So, he, he was alleged to have, uh, he was accused of. Which country did the English send him to? He was accused of having munitions, although they didn't find any. Put on the next boat and sent to South Africa. Yeah, South, South Africa. Africa. And from there, he made his way to Chicago. No kidding. And he rose to the rank of a captain in the Chicago Police All Department. Right. <laughs> yeah. You what know, was that it? was the job that the Irish got. You know, I mean, it was what, what, what it was, was beneath the, the noses of the sure. uh, the Pradies to, to take such a job. Yeah. But the Irish Catholics, I mean, we, we you know, we, we loved uh, being out there on the front lines protecting what was good. You get the uniform, you get the shoes, you get the pension. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What was his name? Patrick Cooney? Yes, Patrick Cooney. I'm Mark Cooney Curran Jr. Oh, God bless him. So that's the yeah. middle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, did you ever consider becoming, well, you were a cop, you were the sheriff. So well. I did. I went to law school, and yeah. even despite that, I still, you know, thought about just being a, a, a copper. And, yeah. um, you know, I, I, I think there, I, you don't become a prosecutor typically by accident. Yeah. I mean, there's so many easier jobs, and there's better-paying jobs and everything else. It's usually a calling. Yeah. So for people that w like to work with the police, like to put bad guys away, yeah. and like to make the community safer, it's a great job. I mean, I can remember, I remember you know, trying cases back, a murder case I tried, and uh, jury came back in a half hour, oh. and a guy was going away for the rest of his life. And I was living with my wife. We were just about to get married down in Wrigleyville. But I tried the case up in Waukegan as a prosecutor, and just remember when I got off the train, I could have touched telephone the top of telephone poles. I was so high. Oh, because I mean, it's like no m money would have satisfied me on that level. It was yeah, just, yeah. I mean, it was just the feeling of, of having feel. really made that that type of an impact was great. And that's the way you felt all the time. Yeah. Back in the day when you didn't have Kim Fox's running offices, I worked in Cook County under Cecil Partee. He was oh, actually yeah. a good guy. Yeah. And a good lawyer, black guy, yeah, good lawyer, smart him. guy. I bought a let couch. Let people do their I had job. An office at 134 North LaSalle. He was moving out, and he sold me his couch. I yeah, said, the stories, great guy, the, wouldn't he? The stories this couch could tell, I'm sure. Yeah. Cecil <laughs> <Marty>. <laughs> yeah. So he took over after Richard M. Daly uh, as state attorney and cook. So you were prosecuting in the in the Cook Cook County State Attorney. I, I, I prosecuted in Cook for a while, but then I, I spent eight years in Lake, and then oh, I went really? to the Attorney General's office under Jim Ryan. Oh sure. And I was supervisor of criminal, yeah. five years. Jim Ryan passed away about a year and a half ago. God rest his soul. And uh, one of guy. the great, great, great Irish Catholic yeah. men, a Golden Glove champion, yeah, solid pro life, and just yeah. an awesome human being. Yes, he was terrific. I remember you and. Uh, and uh, Skinny were big supporters of his when he ran for governor the first time. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> so that's where you, you, you got it, the, the taste for law enforcement and everything. When you made the transition from uh, a prosecutor into sheriff, was it difficult? Or, what was that so like? it, it was a different world. Yeah. Um, so I, I went from 
you know, prosecutor's office is, if, if you have a bad prosecutor, you just say, hey, you know, you're not working out, go find something else, and, yeah. and they will. Police officers, it's a little harder. They, they, have, a, <laughs> they have a pension invested. Yeah. <laughs> they make a lot more money than prosecutors, if oh. we want to be honest. Oh. Um, and I had, you know, I had an office of 600 people, uh, most of them either corrections officers or, or police officers, sheriff deputies, and That's huge. eight unions. Eight, Eight different unions? bargaining oh, units. Wow. Yeah. And, um, you know, one thing that I did, you know, and I'm, I'm with you as far as back to blue and, and everything else, and I agree 100%, but I did have conversations with Dart where I, he and I actually agreed on something. And I remember he would go on these rants about the unions. Uh, and, I mean, I'm the Republican. He's the Democrat. He, yeah. he couldn't say enough bad things about the unions. Yeah. And... Um, and essentially, his complaint was that you know everything that they did to protect the bad guys and you know what have you within the department. And I, I remember uh, he had a canine unit and Cook Preck, County, yeah, in yeah. Cook County. And Preckwinkle wanted budget cuts, yeah. and he was getting all these grievances filed by the canine officers, wanting overtime for this and wanting yeah. more money because the dog will come up in the night and <laughs> wanting this and that, and they they just never stopped coming. So Preckwick wanted a budget cut, and what do you think was the first thing he cut? Canines. The canines. We're done. We yeah. don't need dogs anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, it's, uh, my dad was a labor lawyer, totally believe in the working guy, totally believe in, in all of that, mm-hmm. but sometimes, you know, they can be their wor- own worst enemy, and we saw that in law, we see that in law enforcement at times oh, as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, you're obviously aware of the whole insane situation we're in with our society and uh, what's going on in Chicago and everything. Do you see any light at the end of the tunnel? What's the, yeah, really, I really don't. So yeah. they're lowering the standards because they can't get anybody to apply to be a police officer. I mean, what's yeah. that going to, what's the long-term effect of that going to be? Yeah. So couple that with the fact job. that I, I can tell you from having sat in that job, having been the guy that, you know, was essentially the, the biggest department. We were the biggest department in Illinois is, uh, CPD. The yeah. second biggest is, is uh, Illinois State Police. Yeah. And I can't remember if Lake County or it's not DuPage. It was either Lake or Cook. Have, County Sheriff have the third biggest department. So I had a big agencies. Yeah. And I'll tell you something. You know, sitting in, in that chair, some guy pulls up on the scene and he decides he's, you know, a police officer. He decides he's not going to get out of his car for a while. It's not really something you can discipline them for. You know, we tell them they need to go home safely at the end of the shift. Yeah. Uh, he says, you know, I didn't have enough backup or whatever. That's, that's, not, that's not discipline, uh, something that you could discipline him for. But he gets out and he makes a mistake. And you want to take away his job, his pension. You want to prosecute him. You want to send him to prison so that he can sit there with all the people that he's put away for yeah. years. Yeah. And you want to absolutely destroy him on a level that no other... No other profession faces that type of an attack. So what are they going to get? I mean, it, the city is, is up for grabs. Yeah, absolutely. And they got a jackass as a mayor. Yep. And they got, you know, um, the city council. It, it's never been this bad. It's never, ever yeah. been this bad. Do you see yourself running for office again, maybe? Yeah, I was encouraged to run for state's attorney by a lot of people uh, this time up in Lake. And I, I just... Didn't and who's the I, Lake County State's Attorney now? Eric Reinhardt. So there's two people that voted for the Safety Act, and that's the bill. Oh, that, that's and it was Reinhardt and Fox. Yes, they're the only two that that, that voted that uh, yeah. people should get released with no bail. Yeah. yeah, they shouldn't have to. We shouldn't have criminals posting bail. No, it's crazy. Um, that Safety and, Act is terrible. You know, he he has been a he's you know a Soros guy that uh, has been yeah. absolutely horrible. But yeah. you know, I ran. For sheriff four times, I won three times. I lost by 137 votes out of a quarter million in oh a county my God. that became overwhelmingly blue. Yeah. Then I ran for U.S. Senate. I won a five-way primary, but I took on a guy that you know entrenched. Yeah, that it was entrenched in, yeah. in the, the corrupt media that wouldn't give you the time oh, of day no, and was so him, in yeah. bed for him. Yeah. Channel Nine is, I mean, they're just <laughs> unbelievable. They they wouldn't they didn't give two seconds to my. St- to my uh, race, yeah. I mean, they just did everything their absolute best to ignore it. Yeah. And I call. We would call down there. Can you run a story or at all? You know, yeah. you're not hosting any debates. You're not doing anything. No. no, no interest. Yeah. And um, 
and we know, I mean, it's an obvious fact that they take care of the incumbent so that he can feed them fluff stories that they can run and make themselves sure. look like journalists yeah. because they're lazy and they have no integrity. and they're, they're, Essentially, they personify evil. <laughs> That's why I'm, all right, for Christian, Catholic, Irish radio listeners out there, yeah. Tell your kids to pick up the cross and get a job in the media. And I don't care yeah. who these dirtbags are that are running it. We need our own media. We do. And we need to start, you know, essentially uh, undermining their attempts to destroy everything that's good. You know what? I think <coughs> one of the great uh, patron saints of the police is St. Michael the Archangel. And they have a, a, a FOP, St. Michael the Archangel Hall, I think is terrific. But it, we need more of that. We need, you know, more role models of police and people like that, especially for the young guys coming up. It's like, what the heck? Uh, and they have vilified the police all over this nation. It's pathetic. Uh, I don't know what's going on in Ireland, to tell you the truth. I haven't been following it. The Gardaí. Gardaí. But, uh, yeah, Ireland's a cause for concern. I mean, you go back to the 1980s when Ronald Reagan was president, and mass attendance, weekly mass attendance oh, yeah. in Ireland was in over 90%. Yeah, forget it. No. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. We never had that in, in, ever in the United States. Yeah. They had over 90% mass attendance. Now they've dropped to like, you know, somewhere around a third or so. Yeah. They're still ahead of us, but it, it's, it's, that's not, that doesn't bode well for Ireland. You know, God is the answer to everything. You know, I got a funny story for you. Now I go to mass on Sunday with my, right. my kids and grandkids and, I have a background on stage and everything, and there was this priest. I'm not going to say what parish it was or anything, but he'd get up and, you know, when Jesus said, and it was like, man, don't talk to us like that. And one day as we're leaving Mass, my son Patty almost killed me, I said to the priest, I said, you know, you need a coach. He goes, a coach for what? I said, talking, you know. And I said, I can help you. And Patty goes, Dad, come on. I said, what? You know, I've been an actor for 50 years. I'm going to be able to tell this guy how to, you know, because it was very stentorian. But I'll go, and that guy comes out, and I go, uh, I'm going to have to take some money off my uh, my donation yeah, yeah, this yeah. week <laughs> if this guy keeps coming up. But there is a paucity of good preachers out there. Now, when I was living in Berwyn, we had a guy father tony branken are you familiar with him at all no whoa he's the best yeah he's retired now he's out in, but he was dynamite yeah but there aren't any guys like that anymore yeah. there are very few my wife had a lot of college friends from chicago heights we yeah. make it down that way this is a solid area yeah but if, where where do you go on sunday who's your hip priest? Yeah. are they any good uh, oh, you can't you rap know, on the radio. Yeah, I mean, no <laughs> let's put it this way i i'm we do. That's the beauty of WSFI Catholic Radio, 88.5 FM, 750 AM WNDZ, where I yeah. host a show. And we do uh, we do take them on. You know? Good. We, we call them out, and we've called the Holy Father out. We've called Cardinal Supich out. We've called Absolutely. All, a lot of these no priests. Kidding. I mean, they're really going after the really good ones, too, which is really a shame. you know. And, Huli, I, I could put it in a, in a very uh, you know succinct way. Um, description as to why Hooli's good and this guy's not. <laughs> and essentially, it's got to be in your belly. Yes. You're going to bore the hell out of me if you don't believe it. Yes, exactly. And if, you don't, and if you're not believing it enough, you know, start reflecting on it and praying on it so that you got that fervor. Yeah, yeah. You know, as a trial lawyer, we learn that when you have logic and reason that competes against passion and emotion... Passion and emotion wins out. Always. Freud told us that a long time yeah, ago. So yeah. how do you get in there and how do you convey passion and emotion? You know, I, I mean, for me, when I was a prosecutor, I'd reflect on all the evil that these guys did. Yeah. It didn't happen in a blink. I'm not going to talk about reasonable doubt ad nauseum. Yeah. I'm going to talk about the fact that if you let this guy go, Oh, he might be walking around your house exactly. tomorrow he night. Might be next. So, yeah. yeah, exactly right. Yeah. You got to get to their gut. Yeah. And if this guy wants to save souls, he's got to, you know, I mean, that hell's yes. real. Absolutely. Why does Christ spend so much time in, in, in the Gospels talking about hell? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, 
real quick, you mentioned that you wanted to discuss prosecu- prosecutorial overreach, which we're seeing a lot of now with Donald Trump and, and stuff like that. Any, you know, any comment you want to make about that? Yeah, I, I just, you know, I, I think that anybody that's objectively honest in the overwhelming majority of people that vote Democrat are not. I mean, that's the problem. <laughs> no, they're not. I yeah, mean, they rationalize, not they rationalize everything. Yeah. They know that they are voting on the basis of what's demonic. Mm-hmm. And if they're Catholics, they know that their, their eternal soul is in great jeopardy. And so they've got to rationalize it. So Trump, you know, blah, blah, blah. The we're going to talk, talk about Trump. We're not going to talk about killing babies. We're not going to talk about religious liberty. We're not going to talk about the destruction of families. We're going to talk about Trump. Yeah. So um, this, is, this is frightening times, and I never thought I'd see it in America. So they, they, they come for Trump, and this is a, an old playbook. You know, they start coming for the leaders, and then they start working their way down. Yeah. yeah. You know, they're, they're going in, you know, as opposed to most prosecution schemes we try to get to the top yeah you know we flip people to get to the to the the very top they're, they're not doing it that way they're going at the top first no. but they're gonna they're gonna work their way down and we've seen that happen in communist nations fascist nations where the, where they do that they, they go after the leaders and then they go after the people because they don't want any opposition and uh we are in frightening times and if you think that donald trump has done something that you know, worse than what Joe Biden has done or uh, Bill Clinton. Yeah. I mean, you got to be out of your mind. I mean, that, it's just a- absolutely absurd. Great but their hearts are so hard, Hooli. Oh, their you. hearts are so hard. The left's hearts are so hard. Yeah. It's so hard to talk to them. So yeah. I think we're better off just praying and getting out of their way and not, you know, getting ourselves worked up by talking to people who absolutely have sold their soul to the devil. You know, there's a great... Trump had a great, is it a meme or whatever they call it? It's a picture of him, and he says, it, it's not me they're after. It's you they're coming for. Right. <laughs> it's like, 100%. Yes, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, Trump was, and I liked, I thought he was great from a perspective of a guy who was a Democrat until 2008. Um, you know, I always identified with the working guy and not the Rockefellers. Sure. And Trump, you know, was... From a working guy's perspective, that's why he won Ohio and c- killed it in all those factory towns. Yeah, was he really? He was. He spoke their language, and they believed him, and they and he and he delivered that. You know, we're going to start building stuff in this country. We're going to start taking care of our workers. We're going. I mean, when they asked him, you know, does he pay enough in taxes? Probably not. He says, <laughs> you, "You're never going to hear that from <laughs> any of those lefties." You know, yeah. uh, with the exception of, of Buffett, who's horrible, anyways. But. Uh, Trump was great on on so many levels for uh, for people like Chicagoans that yes. historically were a lunch bucket oh. uh, but audience. Th- this is a democratic state where it's done. Basically, Illinois is done as far as I'm concerned. I don't see it coming back. Uh, but I'm 74 years old now. What am I going to do? Move? Yeah, I don't know. You know. Yeah, that's where I grew up. My family is here. I'm 60, and you know what? I I was a big Jimmy Buffett fan because he went to, he actually got married at my college the first time. He oh, died like, who just died, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I was just thinking, you know, I, most of my life's in the rearview mirror right now. Yeah. And, you know, it's it's really not a frightening thought when you think about the fact that it is that Cardinal George worried about his, his eternal soul, and I think about how much holier that he was than probably anybody I knew. Yeah. So we still are going to, you know, have to face God, and we're going to have to answer but when you think about the fact that what our kids are going to have to face on earth, I know. and we're going to be gone. Yes, I And it's know. like, you know, geez, I'm... I'm, I'm yeah. 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 Let's end on an up note, though. Sure, <laughs> sure. Uh, the Irish always... That's right. The yeah. Irish always keep the faith. The Irish yeah. always <laughs> believe the wind is at their back. Yeah. The Irish always believe that in the end we win. Yeah. Christ tells us in the end we win. Okay. And uh, there's no reason, you know, as Ronald Reagan, happy warrior. Yeah. You know, there, you're, you're not a good witness if you're walking around sullen face and you're losing. You know what, Brandon Johnson? Screw you, buddy. You only have so much impact on my life. You're going to answer to God, and I'm going to answer to God, and I don't want to be you. Well said. Thank Mark you. Curran here on Hibernian Radio. we got to wrap you. this up. Thank you.